everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And today we're gonna leave no dye behind, use up some dye leftovers, and I'm not expecting to get something very saturated. I'm expecting we're gonna end up with a bright blue, but maybe it'll be toned down a little bit because we're gonna add some neon colors that mix together in a more muted way. Our leftovers include some diluted extreme blue that looks pretty pigmented. It's enough to give us a reasonable amount of pigment on yarn, but then we have three fluorescent colors. We have some radioactive, fluorescent fuchsia, and fluorescent lemon. Now these three colors are mixed at less than a 1% depth of shade. And I would be able to quickly calculate how much dye we have in there. I'm not gonna bother with the math here, but we started with a gram of dye and 130 milliliters of liquid using one of these containers to measure, and I've measured the volume in these and they hold 130 milliliters. Then I filled up the containers to the bottom uh, of that circle, which is around 30 milliliters, maybe 25, and I brought the volume up to a total of 130 milliliters there again. Okay, so this would give us this expression here, and I've left all the units out because this would give us grams of dye per milliliters, uh, which would give the concentration of our three colors right there. I'm very much hand waving over this math and not bothering to do those calculations because ultimately my point is that we have way less than one gram of dye left here. <laughs> way, way less. And I am doing some estimates, uh, back of the envelope calculations, and I know that there's way less than one gram of dye here. Maybe at one point, oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, I do know that extreme blue can still be pretty pigmented, even when there's not that much dye there. Why am I bothering to go through all this uh, when I'm not following through the math, I'm doing just back of the envelope estimations, and that's because sometimes when I want to decide how much yarn to dye for leftovers, these are the kinds of thoughts that go through my head. If I knew I had a few grams of dye, I would bring a few skeins of yarn. And I probably could dye 200 grams of yarn and not end up with something completely pastel, but I might end up with something completely pastel given the amount of dye that I think I have left. So my plan is to just dye 100 grams of yarn here because I think that that's what makes the most sense given what, given what I have left over. And I thought it was worth talking more about this thought process because the plan is to really just mix everything together in a pot, add the yarn, and see what we get. <laughs> I do have, and I think I've shown the first one, I do have a container where I've been saving leftovers um, from the beginning of the year. I could add all this dye to there, but because I have it left in these open bottles, I really just wanna use it up. And so that's what we're gonna go do right now. While I am talking to you in front of the camera, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. This is the biggest way you can help support the content here, and I really appreciate it. My other leftover steamer basket actually has a tiny bit of pink in it. That's actually interesting, but we're gonna reuse that water. <laughs> and if you're curious, all of this yarn is leftovers from the bonus SMS and SMS uh, video where I did the resist dyeing with the blue and those neon colors. I just added more water. Now, I mentioned that I thought our colors could end up being a little bit muted. And that's because the average of our three fluorescent colors may look like this, a little bit orange. And you know what happens when you mix orange and blue? Well, you get brown. Um, but I am gonna come in with all of these containers and may as well rinse them off in the dye bath, starting with our neons, 
because as soon as I add that blue, <laughs> then things aren't gonna look like much. Now, a lot of these neon peg pigments will never look quite as opaque as the blue, even if we have a lot of dye. And even with my back of the envelope-ness, because I don't know quite how much of the blue I have, I'd be hard pressed to say if I have more of the neon colors or more of the blue. But everything was mixed up two days ago. So things are fairly fresh. And this color is honestly looking very pink. We could end up with something that shifts purple. That I don't know. I'm going to start heating things up. And we're gonna bring over our blue. And I am gonna fill this up to rinse it out, but all of a sudden, things are way more opaque. Now, for reference, when I have um, dyes that I can see all the way through and it's more translucent and less opaque, then I know that there's not that much pigment there, with the exception of some of those neon colors. Uh, and so, that is how I know that there was a lot of blue dye in here originally because it was so opaque. Now since things are not that hot, ooh, am I getting a flash of some like greenish? I guess like orange and blue do can give a green depending on the proportions. I'm now so curious about this color. Uh, but I'm going to let it heat up and I am going to add some acid now. And with using leftovers, here's some white vinegar that I have in a cup. Uh, that was, again, leftover from what I was doing yesterday. And so, may as well toss that in there. And while we wait for things to heat up, let's go chat about our yarn. The yarn we're going to dye today is a dry favorite of all of ours. This is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering White Yarn. The yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. It absorbs color really fast. And my plan is to add it to our dye bath we just mixed up, dry. Uh, this means we're going to get a lot of variation and tonal variation in here because some of the areas that get wet sooner are going to soak up more of that color. Uh, if you want to learn more about this yarn or any of the other tools and equipment I use in my videos, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. You may need to click more to expand just under the title of the video. Uh, and sometimes I think on mobile you actually have to do that twice. Uh, but then I have a list of links of all the things I commonly use in videos and I always try to include the exact yarn base. And further down under video contents, I try to include the, the dye brands and color names that I used. And if I had measurements, I'll include those measurements down there as well, which is mostly a handy reference for me, but it can be a handy reference for you as well if you wanna to try to replicate my results. Okay, let's go to the dye pot. <laughs> We're getting hot. And I realized since things are hot, it makes sense to have a set of tongs on hand. So that way we add the yarn. Ooh, well that's not what I expected. We had enough other color in here to make it a teal. Wow, that's a gorgeous color. Oh my goodness. All right, I moved around the yarn a bit, uh, not to get something dip dyed necessarily, but just to make sure we get all of the yarn wet. But this color is beautiful. I mean, I didn't think we were gonna have an ugly color. Let me be clear there. But I did think that the blue was gonna dominate more than it did. And as far as teals go, it's not that muted but it's also not like a super bright teal. And I think that that's because of all of those other colors that we have in there. But this is great. Uh, I'm now gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll be back. But actually, I did get a question recently about how you know when the yarn is done uh, and if you need to add more heat. Generally, I like to have 30 minutes of heat because I've found 
that this means I'm more likely to have no bleeding when I go to wash it and give success. If your dye bath is clear, then odds are you're in a pretty good shape. I just like to add extra heat sometimes, um, but if things have been warm for a long period of time, odds are things are probably pretty good to go. Actually, let's move this again. Whoa! <laughs> oh man, in just a minute or two, almost all the colors in the yarn, except for some of those neon pinks, which may or may not strike. There's some pink that sometimes uh, will just take longer. But anyway, I like to wait 30 minutes. That makes me feel good. But if you have like a double, double boiler set up and things aren't quite at a simmer and it was hot for a long period of time, I'd say you're probably pretty good. Been 30 minutes. Okay, I need a pan. I always use these aluminum pans while I'm letting the yarn cool. Uh, mainly because if I, I don't want to put in something plastic. And you know what? We do have pinks left in there. What I'm looking for is my zip tie, which I cannot find. Which is odd. So it's definitely there. I think it must be on the inside of the yarn. Now, to avoid tangles, I normally try to remove yarn by the zip tie. And then to remove water, I will usually, uh, there's the zip tie right there, um, wrap it around whoop, my tongs just to let some of that water drain out. I am going to be extra careful because that zip tie is in the middle of the yarn and I don't want to tangle anything. So I'm going to let this cool and I'll try to remember that I want to show how I avoid tangles <laughs> uh, in a little bit. I know we're steamy, but I'm going to set this aside to cool. And yeah, we have some pinks left in here. This doesn't mean that the yarn is going to bleed. Sometimes with a little bit of pink like this, you need to let the yarn cool completely in the dye bath to absorb that color. But the reason why I'm not going to do this is that I found that if there is blue or pink in the dye pot after a period of time, and usually it's not a lot of color, but if I let the yarn cool in the dye bath to absorb that last bit of color, then I'm more likely to end up with a bleeder on my hand. And so sometimes it's okay to leave a little pigment behind. But anyway, we'll be back once the yarn is cool. Okay, here is our yarn. We have cooled a fair amount. Uh, and so I'm going to carefully lift it because what I don't want is to pull things through the wrong way. Ooh, being very, very careful. Okay. Now, the nice thing about the zip tie is it gives us a view of how the yarn should be. Um, and right now, things are looking a little tangled, which actually, maybe it'll resolve all wet, maybe it won't, but this is a tie that should things get twisted, we can, once things are dry, work out and figure out where the like yarn is supposed to go. But actually, hey, that's separated. Now, I don't recommend doing tons of untangling on wet yarn, just enough so that way you know you're not gonna make things any worse. Uh, otherwise, I would say wait and do the untangling when the yarn is dry because then you're less likely to snag it or to stretch it or break it. The yarn is more fragile while it's wet than when it's dry. But anyway, we can go wash this down. As we get ready to wash the yarn, I want to show why I use clear dish soap usually. And I'm using a little more than I might normally use. But can you tell now that our water changed to be ever so slightly blue with the addition of the Blue Dawn? Now, I'm not worried. I'm now checking to see if it says, I have no idea what makes it blue. <laughs> I was just trying to check the ingredients list. Um, 
I just, it, it's a little bit of color that's in there, which when I'm filming things, then sometimes means, okay, if we have a blue color that could bleed, is there blue coming out? Or is it the little bit of that soap? Um, and so it just makes it easier to tell when you're doing clear soap. Now, if I'm washing things off camera, I use the blue soap with no issue. I know what to expect. But since I'm filming the process and sharing this with all of you, I want to be able to say that there is no color bleeding. Or when there is bleeding, I like to be able to talk about it. Now, we have some lovely, subtle variation of color in here. There are definitely some areas that feel a little more blue, a little more yellow. Please excuse the sunlight. <laughs> um, you know, for such a simple project, I have a lot to say and share today. But anyway, I'm gonna go pop this yarn through my spin dryer. I'll hang it up to dry. And we'll take a look at the finished yarn that we got with our leftover dice. Here is the finished teal yarn. And I didn't show as I was laying it out, but there was no evidence of tangles when I removed the zip tie. Sometimes with yarn, you can see a little bit of bunching around the ties. And the way I deal with that is to put both hands through the yarn like so, and then I give it like a good snap, which I don't think my hands are all on camera, but then that will allow everything to lay nice. This tunnel is lovely and we got really good coverage here. We have some areas that are almost like a soft yellow and then areas where we have more of the blue as well. The color is very, very muted overall, but still a pretty teal. I think we're a little lucky we got such good coverage of the color, especially given that our dye bath was hot and there was acid in there before adding the yarn. Uh, because some of these colors could have struck pretty quickly, leaving even more differences in the saturation of our color. I love the dimension that we got here. Now, could I replicate this color? Maybe the hardest part will be figuring out the amount of blue that I had, but I could try and maybe get somewhere close with some trial and error and I can estimate a little better based on how full the containers were with those neon fluorescent colors. But the thing with leave no dye behind yarns is that without a measurement, it can be really hard to know exactly how much dye you have. But just to show both how unsaturated this teal is and how muted the color is, here is the yarn that I dyed that has each of our colors individually. We've got our Brilliant Blue, Fluorescent Fuchsia, Fluorescent Lemon, and Radioactive. And so you can really see that when we combine all of them together, uh, you can get something a lot more muted. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I don't always know exactly the colors that I have when I do a Leave No Dye Behind project. Sometimes, these are incorporated into whatever video it is I'm filming. Other times I have leftovers that I save over the course of a dying day or week and then combine those together to just try to use up the leftovers that I have. And I feel like I probably gave some really informative information this time. Uh, editing Rebecca will have to see to confirm how coherent I was, but I love to share my thought process and to the best I can, I try to share different thoughts along the way as well, just so that way you can get some insight into my process, which maybe will help inspire you as you go play with color. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I'll have it linked down in the video description along with a bunch of other helpful links, places you can find me on social media, and more. Oh, I love a good tonal. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching.